Yes, sir. I, I was interested before you had mentioned the, a comparison between 19th century and 20th century America. I'd like to know if you think that that's, you know, I don't see how that could be considered a legitimate comparison in terms of, in terms of the fact that, you know, there were unlimited resources essentially in the 19th century and, and now we have a kind of very limited resource and, and allocation situation. At least this seems to be the thrust of a lot of, I know, but you know, that's, economists that, that's fundamentally saying. wrong. And, well, just <laughs> let, let me, before, before, before I'm, yeah, before sure, I'm Sure, you go ahead. Uh, sure. Let me finish the question. Uh, in the 19th century, when you had a completely free economy, uh, you seem to have situations developing where uh, tycoons would come along like Rockefeller or the railroad barons, essentially, and they'd come to dominate society. So is, is it not a choice? Do we ha not have a choice between developing that kind of situation where John D. Rockefeller and that crowd will decide what's good for our society or whether the government officials will? Well, let's take the Rockefellers and just stick with them. Who John created D. the University of Chicago, incidentally. I know. He founded, the, he founded the University of Chicago. Tell me. John D. Rockefeller did a great deal of good for this country. He developed and promoted. I'm not talking about his charitable activities. That was separate. Not even about the founding of the University of Chicago. But he uh, developed and into a major industry, the, the oil industry of, of refining, discovering, and making oil available. He reduced its cost. He never got a dollar from anybody with a gun. He got his money by selling people products at a lower cost than other people could provide it. His grandson, Nelson Rockefeller, did enormous harm to the country by operating through the political channel. Did, did I do If Nelson have Hoy, <laughs> if Nelson, <laughs> if Nelson Rockefeller had, if we had the 19th century version, and Nelson Rockefeller, with all his accumulated wealth, had tried his hardest to spend that in such a way as to reduce the freedom and the affluence of other people. He could not have come close to achieving what he did achieve in that direction as, as a political figure. He couldn't even have afforded to put up the Albany Mall, <laughs> let alone to have undertaken the measures which made New York State a basket case, <laughs> which, re which, which changed the educational structure of New York State, in my opinion, in a very adverse direction. But let me go back to your first question. First place, it is simply not true that we have limited resources now, whereas we had unlimited resources in the 19th century. On the contrary, from every important economic point of view, we have a greater volume of resources now than we had then. Tell me. In 1850, how much oil did we have? We, we had it hadn't been discovered. It was useless. <laughs> we had no oil. The first oil well was discovered, came, was, was drilled in Titusville in 1858. We have more oil now than we had in 1850 in a <laughs> meaningful economic sense. Before nuclear power was discovered, how much nuclear power and energy did we have? The progress of, the progress of technology has had the effect of increasing the effective volume of resources available to us, so that we have far greater resources available now than we had in the 19th century as a result of the technological and business developments that were produced. Is government regulation of the resources necessary? Not at all. Government regulation of resources of the kind we've had has led to waste and misuse of resources. So, so that really, go back, look at your, your analysis. What matters are the resources that are available to be used, not those that will be discovered later on. Of course, one more thing needs to be said. We are, of course, wealthier and better off than were the people in the 19th century. But we are their heirs. We could not be where we are if they had not done what they did. And I think it's a false comparison not to take into account the debt which we owe to the enormous economic progress and development of the 19th century, to the fact that our ancestors came here with empty hands and have made it possible for us to have a decent life. I hate to use the old cliche about standing on their shoulders, but that's what we do. Yes, I, I was interested before you had mentioned a comparison between 19th century and 20th century America. I'd like to know if you think that that's, you know, I don't see how that could be considered a legitimate comparison in terms of, in terms of the fact that, 
you know, there were unlimited resources essentially in the 19th century and, and now we have a kind of very limited resource